we want to answer some of the questions that the whole world and the investment community is looking at. You tweeted this weekend after the victory of your party with Tsai Ing-wen. Uh, through voting, we reaffirm that Taiwan is a sovereign nation. That's a red line for Beijing. When anyone here on Taiwan talks about sovereignty and independence, yeah. what, the indep what the investors around the world want to know, has the risk level for possible confrontation with China increased now? To our people, we think everything is Chinese red line. We make friends with the other country. We join the international community, even something like a WHO, WHA, ICAO, Interpol, non-politics international organization. Beijing, Chinese communists, they always yell at Taiwan. That's a red line. Even we got friends with United States. You send your some assistant secretary to Taiwan. They say, let's Let's break the rule. So to Taiwanese people, we, we face the China threat for decades. We know their attitude. We always try to talk to China, say, you have to, you have to understand Taiwan exists here really. And we got our own sovereignty. We have our own military. We got tax. Chinese people come to Taiwan, you, they need to apply visa. But, but Beijing has basically resisted or kept quiet uh, from your overtures for dialogue because they do not want to give the DPP of your party uh, any legitimacy. Are you seeing any cracks from the bellicose rhetoric that we do get from Beijing saying there is only one China and that will not change? Dialogue between two countries sometimes is not words. Sometimes it's some kind of decision, some kind of move. This to, uh, 2020 our election, more than a million people support Tsai Ing-wen, President Tsai Ing-wen. That sent a signal, very strong signal. Eight million, yes. Yeah, a million, more yeah. than a million, actually. It sent a signal. The signal is Taiwan want to keep our way, our, our life. Democracy, we got freedom, got right to choose our own president, our own legislator. When and more than any million people, that's historical high, to so send a message. There is one, I, th I call that signal. There is one signal happened yesterday. You know, bef the last three years, Taiwan always tried to help or some, get some information from China. For example, the, the pig swim is, is serious yep. in, in China. We try to help, try to get some information, and some diseases, a disease happened in China. We try to co uh, cooperate with them. We send message. We send requirement. Nothing. We, they don't reply. Sometimes they will reject in public. But you got a reply yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday, you know, Wuhan, some kind of pneumonia. Yeah, pneumonia, some kind of like SARS. And uh, our health department officer say, we, we want to know what's going on. Can we send our expert? Yeah, to Wuhan. Yesterday, just last night, Chinese government sent a reply. That's the first time. The say, day after the election, you got a reply yes. from China. Say yes. Before you had nothing. Nothing. Yes, please come. They send this message. That's significant. Now let's talk about defense spending because you are the chairman of the Defense yes. and National Security Committees. Now there is threats that China wants to reunify. And Xi Jinping says this cannot be something that is passed generation to generation. It has to happen. If it's not going to happen through peaceful means, it'll happen through force. What are you going to be your defense priorities in the next four years? On the next four years, we have to let Xi Jinping or Chinese government understand. If they choose in some military way to invade Taiwan, the cost will be too high. They can afford it. That's our strategy. And we, we are not trying to compete with China. We don't want to be the world superpower. We well, just you want can't. to program home. You have a $12 billion defense budget. China has $250 billion. They got more than that. Well, you have been approved for F-16s. Are there other hardware that you need from the United States? We, we have a shortage in underwater. underwater submarine. Technology. Submarine. We, we need that. And we are building our own submarine. I believe we can have one modern good submarine within three years. And for, to China, they, they always try to use 
military force to reunify with Taiwan. I, I think that's invasion, not, not reunified. But they don't have that capability for now. So we need to think to shorten this gap. So 2023 will be an important time because at that time, M1A2 T, the battle tank, will send to Taiwan. Yeah. 2023 F16V, the latest, the new, the new one, will send to Taiwan. 2023, our first submarine will be done. So at the moment, and we try to reorganize our military organization. We don't want to cause any trouble, but we have confidence to protect our home, our country, because not to protect Taiwan. The only one have to take a responsibility is Taiwanese. Right. We appreciate other friends' help. United States want to help us, thank you. But we understand the only responsibility is on our shoulders. Will Taiwan or should Taiwan join RIMPAC, the big military exercises, this year? There's speculation yes. perhaps you could do it, and it could be in the South China Sea. Yes. You have claims to Taipingdao yeah. in the Spratly Islands. That would be very provocative to China. Yeah, you just, you, you just mentioned a very important question. You know, in Asia, the Indo-Pacific only two countries didn't get invited to join the RIMPAC, North Korea and Taiwan. How can Taiwan be avoid or abandoned? So according to United States NDAA each year and your Taiwan Travel Act or Taipei Law, we, we do hope this year, 2020, we can get invitation to join the RIMPAC. RIMPAC is a, it's not so military exercise, but it's meaningful. In Oriental, especially to China, simple and uh, the real, the practical, also means something. To let them know, this regional, we have cooperation. Don't do stupid thing. You cannot afford it. Very quickly, one word, yes or no. Is the risk of confrontation higher now or lower? Lower. 